Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last chapter in your textbook, chapter 29, titled Human Development and Getting Old. This is the very last lecture that I will do for you. I hope some of you are still tagging along and listening to some of this. Uh, this is going to be very short and sweet. Sec there are four sections. Please print off the study or the uh, figures and tables as I've asked you to. The study guide is on page 1127. Section one is titled Fertilization and the Pre-Embryonic Stages. This is early, earliest stages of life. Let me just read a little bit of what your author has said. Authorities attach different meanings to the word embryo. Some use it to denote stages beginning with the fertilized egg, or at least with the two-celled stage produced by the first division. Others first apply the word embryo to an individual 16 days old. Why that age? Well, that's when the three primary germ layers called the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderms have begun to uh, develop. So, I don't care which of these definitions, there is no one that is best. But, let's start looking first at sperm migration. Sperm, once they are injected into the female, can only live um, for 12 to 24 hours before uh, they lose their ability to move. Uh, the egg then must be fertilized within 12 to 24 hours of ovulation. So, in order for that to occur, the sperm usually meets the egg somewhere about one-third of the way along the uterine tube. And then fertilization begins. Uh, figure 29.1 shows how sperm uh, is in injected into the egg. I shouldn't use the word injected. Uh, but that is when fertilization actually occurs. When one sperm head enters the uh, mature uh, egg and the mature oocyte, this is when the first cell, the zygote, it has 26 chromosomes again. This is called fertilization, of course. Look now at figure 29.2, and you can see uh, the migration of the first stages of the embryo uh, in, from the ovary into the body of the uterus. At about six or seven days, the, the stage now that is called the blastocyst, which has numerous cells now, is implanted into the lining of the uterus, the endometrium. Usually that occurs, and most normally and hopefully it occurs in the upper part of the uterus. It is best protected there and gives the most room uh, for the infant to develop. Look now at table 29.1 and see uh, the listing of the stages of prenatal development. It lists stage age and the major development and defining characteristics. I'm certain that a question or two could come from that table. Now very clinically, as probably most of you know, pregnancy is divided into three month intervals called trimesters. But please remember that the gestation of a human being is actually 
286 days, which cannot be broken into three month segments exactly. So we are approximating by using trimesters. The human development is developed or is uh, divided into three common stages called the pre-embryonic, the embryonic, and then the fetal stages. The fetal stages, when we call this little creature a fetus, actually begins about eight weeks or so uh, after uh, the fertilization has occurred. The term cleavage as shown, as, as discussed starting on page 1100, refers to mitotic divisions. Not meiotic, but mitotic, because 26 chromosome cells are divided into other 26 identical uh, cells. Okay. Then implantation begins, or implantation occurs, as I said, and then embryogenesis. And this, this is the development uh, between 16 days and eight weeks uh, when the three primary germ layers develop. Um, and you can see what's going to happen after that. I want you to look at figure 29.4, which shows actual implantation occurring. Uh, the final photo or final drawing there is at 16 days. Figure 29.5 then shows the formation of the three primary germ layers. These develop into uh, very distinct different parts of the embryo or the, and then the fetus. Uh, look at table 29.2, please, and study this. There's a couple, I'm sure there's a good question that will come out of there. The three different germ layers and the major derivatives of each of those germ layers. These are what happen in the further development of the uh, fetus. Okay, now look at fig or table 29.3. If you haven't seen by now, you could probably get an A minus at least from this course if you just learn the, the things that are in the figures and the tables. This table on page 1105 shows the major events of prenatal development starting at the end of week four going to the end of week 38. It shows the crown to rump uh, length of the little creature and the different developmental events that are taking place during that time period. A sonogram, and I'm sure that ladies or husbands that have sat in with this, sat in with you, uh, have seen uh, the measurements, the crown to rump measurements. And this is how they derive at the age of the embryo and then the fetus. The reason they do that, you can see if you look at the, all the different photos on figure 29.7. It is not until much later in development that the legs extend uh, where you could actually measure the length of the critter from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. So that's why they use crown rump lengths. Next, your author discusses prenatal nutrition. I'm certain that each of you knows that the only nutrition that this tiny baby uh, has comes from the mother through the umbilical cord and the placenta. So please look through this section 
look at figure 29.8. That describes in very much nice detail the placenta and the embryonic membranes. The bottom two pictures are the actual photographs of a placenta that it comes out in the third stage of labor after the baby has been born. Notice on fig in figure B that there are two umbilical arteries. These are colored blue because the blood in them is going back. It, it is uh, un unoxygenated. There is one umbilical vein. Okay, now skipping over again, please look at uh, table 29.4 that discusses uh, five different major functions of the placenta. Please look that over and try to remember most of it. Um, look at figure 29.10 that shows blood circulation in the fetus and then in the newborn. The left-hand side shows fetal circulation when the baby is still in utero. The placenta is still attached and is furnishing blood uh, to the baby. The blood returns to the placenta then after the baby is born and the umbilical cord is first clamped and then transected, then the baby develops its own circulation. That's shown in part B. Uh, it no longer has the placenta to give it any oxygen, take away carbon dioxide, or give any nutrition. Uh, so, some major things have to take place after the baby is born. Look now at section 29.3. This is called the neonate. The neonatal period is defined by most authorities as the first six weeks of life after the baby is born and during which this little baby must adapt to life outside of the uterus. Uh, your author goes through and describes respiratory adaptations, circulatory adaptations, immunological adaptations, and other adaptations that must take place if this baby is going to survive and thrive. Um, something that quite wonderful that has occurred uh, during the last few decades and even since I went to medical school is the ability uh, of our hospitals and our specialists to take care of uh, very, very premature and tiny infants. Your author defines a neonate which weighs under 2.5 kilograms as generally being considered premature. Uh, there are still major changes that should have taken place and haven't yet done that. So this baby must be watched very, very carefully uh, during that time to make sure it has enough oxygen, enough nutrition, uh, and enough protection in order to survive. Um, I don't know uh, what the lowest weight or the youngest a uh, premature baby is that has survived, uh, but I know that it is uh, closer now to 20 weeks of gestation and closer to one to two pounds. Um, and that is still very, very, very amazing to me. Okay, I am going to stop. 
I get depressed if I go on and start reading about aging and senescence. That is a fancy word for becoming senile and even older than probably I am. Um, you, if you've been following along with my lessons, uh, you notice a difference. It is almost spring here. It says on the calendar that it's April, so I shaved off my beard. Uh, I'm getting my golf clubs out again. I'm feeling better and better uh, and anxious to go on with my life. I have a new class of Biology 250 starting next Monday. Uh, as you now are getting into the second half of your class schedule. Uh, stick with us uh, and you too will be finished soon. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.